Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of plasma filament activity on our star. Reminds me of the week before solar cycle 24 began. We've got news around the world and into deep space, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with coronal holes and only minor activity amidst and around those dancing filaments we saw at the start. We have been watching the solar wind from coronal holes, and over the last day, while plasma speed continued its descent, we saw minor density fluctuations leading an active phi angle in blue. Minor turbulence in the heliospheric electric field and geomagnetic conditions remain quiet this morning. Folks, while mid-range earthquakes are spread pretty much all across the western Pacific portion of the Ring of Fire, this is the main concerning cluster in the eastern half from yesterday, hoping for this to die down rather than ramp up today. However, there is really only one geophysical story at the moment, and that is Mount Merapi erupting in Indonesia. It's one of the world's most active volcanoes. It's putting on a lightning show in the ash cloud. It's creating a tremendous plume. It has deposited ash on the nearby villages and sent molten rock buckshot across one side of the mountain while a river of fire snaked down the mountain valley carved by previous eruptions of lava. Pyroclastic flows can be seen on some of the dozens of videos posted online in just the last few hours. I want to come to Australia next because this one storm has been lost in the land for days. Not only is it very slowly making its way southward, but its connection to equatorial vapor flows keep feeding it moisture, and that's not going to stop until long after it's done with the southeast. Meanwhile, since only the heat portion of the weather extremes gets reported in the news these days, I'll continue reminding everyone that we're so sick of snow here in some parts of the Rockies. Our records, the cold direction, are not only being largely neglected in the media, but somehow what we're dealing with just feels more dangerous than having a mild winter. Let's go to the science articles and start with the sun, most appropriately, getting better monitoring and modeling of solar energetic proton storms. We've recently seen how these have some of the greatest soon-to-be-included-in-climate-models heating components of space weather. They affect biological life and, indeed, are satellite killers. And speaking of these proton events, we do have a nice confirmation that the western limb, the right side of the sun as we view it, is responsible for two-thirds of the proton events. This is because Earth is magnetically connected to the sun through the interplanetary magnetic field, and that mostly connects to the western, or again, right side hemisphere of the sun as we view it. It's how the solar wind Parker spirals and the infinitely connected field structures within them are shaped. Up next, let's be clear, the merger hypothesis expressed here is the best option under mainstream astrophysics and cosmology, but they saw no such merger. What they did was find a peculiar massive white dwarf star, which is not only an oxymoron, but one might expect a star of unexpected size for its spectral class to also present other surprises, or at least I'd think so. Apparently, they want to explain them with a merger event. Very quick mention about the W First article in today's link list. It is one of the upgrades from Hubble. It is the upgrade from Hubble that gets forgotten about in the fervor over James Webb. But I think it's going to be one of the things that reveals plasma cosmology at the galactic and circumgalactic level. Scientists have seen a planet forming around a star in a binary system and are puzzled by the lack of effect of the binary on the forming planet. Almost like the electromagnetic environment of each individual star is more controlled by the central engine of its own system or something. Imagine that. Do you remember those cotton candy planets? The ones so light and fluffy that they've baffled scientists. Well, what if they are just ringed systems at an angle? If you think about it, this is a genius idea, and it doesn't require ludicrous concepts of exoplanets, and in fact, Uranus would look like this to aliens checking out our system using dips in brightness of planets eclipsing the star. Uranus rings would make it look fluffy indeed, and this is a much better concept than those ultralight, quote, cotton candy planets. Up next, we're going to Gaia, and the conclusion by the European Space Agency is that the warp to the galaxy must have been caused by a chaotic galactic merger. Who cares? It's basically a perfect ripple all the way around. Let's blame chaos and gravity for it, right? Well, they correctly state that the intergalactic fields and massive halo around the galaxy cannot account for it, but they've mixed up two letters in intergalactic fields. Should be intragalactic fields. The intrinsic, coherent, large-scale structure of the system, including the galactic current sheet, which would indeed account for the perfection they're trying to explain with a chaotic cosmic collision. Leave it to Harvard engineers to take on turbulence in an incredible way. In what I hope can begin to spark your imaginations, this can be applied to basic fluid dynamics 
or plasma cosmology. Not only is this fun to look at, but they've mapped the small scale activity in there and found many things many of you will recognize, like the perpendicular filamentation, the nodes spinning alternatively on either side of the split. As Dr. Peratt showed with plasma discharges, the filaments begin to interact with one another and break into smaller and smaller filamentation structures. Imagination activated. Lastly, we've got two climate points you won't hear on CNN today. Turns out sea level rise was the same in the 1800s, pre-industrialization, for the portion of land, the entire portion studied here, indicating its post-glacial rebound and not actually a change in the seas. And speaking of which, want to know how to kill this planet? Don't allow the plankton to eat. If you'll recall, just two weeks ago, we saw how new projections had them oxygenating and thriving until at least 2100, even under the scariest climate models. Here, we see what happens if the extra food they've been getting were to stop, which, by the way, is carbon dioxide. We're about two months away from this. 300 pages, nearly 500 citations, HD pictures throughout the high school and early college level textbook, no piece of the climate unexamined, no mode or circulation or oscillation ignored. Everything that's going into the IPCC's 2022 report for the first time, here, two years early, with a brand new special chapter on extreme solar activity, the super flare, and the micronova. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.